Hello everyone and welcome back to Wolfpack Wednesday number nine. Now today is a little bit of a different setup because, well, to be honest, I have to put food on the table today like many, many of you and it's a work day. So I have to get some photos edited and I also thought it would be duly fun if I bring you behind the scenes about how I edit some lifestyle photos. So without further ado, let's go. Now today's game on the docket is very different from other games that Bonds and I have done in the past and, and my whole team has done. Um, this one is Mother Frankenstein. So it's an escape room in a box. The challenge that came with this game is that it's an escape room game and it's like a one-time play kind of. So you have to film this and take pictures of this with the thought in mind that you can't spoil content. So that was a very, very difficult challenge because you want to show people what's inside the box, but at the same time, you also want to make sure that you're not, you know, showing different puzzles and clues and, and hints to all that stuff. Depending on how I feel, I usually edit my photos on like a little Wacom tablet or my mouse and keyboard. But I feel like the more Lightroom evolves, the, the less reason I have to be using a tablet, but it's still really fun to use anyway. Okay, first step from what you see here, the lighting is super overexposed. So we are going to actually bring this up a little bit because we will adjust the background lighting a little later. Contrast is okay for now, but highlights, we need to drop that all the way down so we can show some of that background. Um, if anything, I might even come back to this and bring it down a little more. I can edit subjects in later. And then shadows, let's go ahead and bring that up so we see everyone's beautiful faces. Whites are okay for now because uh, the only reason you want to adjust whites is if you want to lower uh, the harshness of all the bright white lighting, but right now it looks okay to me. So I'm gonna leave that there. Blacks, let's go ahead and bring that down so it's a little more punchy. And then we go to our point curve on the right side. And let's start with the overall S curve here. Um, you know, it doesn't, you don't always have to do an S curve. I don't know if you ever watched other photographers edit, but typically a lot of people like to do something like this little S curve, which means it is a little more contrasty and it brings in a lot of life to the photo. But for me, for this particular set and for my general style, I kind of like to avoid that. So what I like to do instead is go ahead and lift up the, <clears throat> the shadows, kind of like the midtones a little bit right here. We're going to soften this up a little bit. And then we're also going to bring up the midtones a little bit more over here too. So we get to see more of my models um, in better lighting. And then we're also going to tone down the highlights on the top right corner. We're going to go to the red point curve. And this one I don't think needs too much adjustment. So there's this is the differences between, you know, red and teal. The only reason you want to adjust this is mostly for skin tone. So what I'm going to do is kind of just slightly bring it up to the pink, just a dash. So it's not too obvious and just leave it at that. We're going to go to green. And for green and magenta, so since I just brought up the red channels, what I'm also going to do is slightly bring up the green to even out this here. If I bring up more green, see how this is, uh, makes everyone's skin look very, very pale and zombie-like? You definitely don't want that. So I'm going to just make very, very minor adjustments to counteract the red that I brought in earlier. So that way it gives a nice even skin tone. And then we go to the blue channels. And for my editing style, the colors that I favor a lot is blue and kind of like goldish brown. Those are like my favorite color palettes. So I'm definitely going to bring in a little more of that here, a little bit of blue there. And let's go to the highlights and bring a little blue in those bright whites. That way it's not just like right now, if you look over here, it's very yellow green. Like if you look in the background, it's very yellow and green. So what I'm gonna do is bring up the blues because I like blue lighting and that's how that part's gonna play out. Then as we shift downwards, so that's our point curve, we're gonna go to the temperature slider. This one makes very, very drastic changes. So right now, I think our overall white balance is okay. Let's see what it looks like on the yellow side. So obviously that's not ideal. Although I do like a little warmer lighting just because Warmer lighting brings in, I feel like it makes everyone's skin glow and it also makes a very happier image. But I also enjoy my clean lighting as well. So we'll find something right in between and probably not adjust it too much. I feel like we did enough adjustments with the point curve already. So we'll go ahead and bring that and leave it there. And then my tint um, is already at 17. Let's go ahead. So right now <clears throat> in the original raw image, this is what you would see. Again, you would see a lot of green. We're gonna counteract that by bringing this over to the right side and adding in some magenta, some pink. 
That way we get something that looks like this. Vibrance and saturation, I don't typically touch, um, especially in the beginning, because it's very, very harsh and you don't want to make, I don't, I'm not the type to make very drastic adjustments to my photos. So then my favorite part of the entire photo editing process is right here. I love the color mixer. So we're gonna start with red. And red here is mostly gonna be seen in Alyssa's sweater and of course her lips and Zhao's um, lips as well. So we're going to bring up the red a little bit, give that some life. We're going to brighten this up a little bit as well, bring in the luminance and that looks pretty good. So very, very subtle changes. That's pretty much the whole theme of like the editing processes. Everything is just layer by layer. It's very, very subtle changes as you go. Okay, now orange mostly affects skin tone. So we are going to bring that up a little bit, bring up a little bit more saturation, see where, say this right here is too much. So we're going to crank that down a little more and then we'll go ahead and bring the luminance up a little bit, brightens up their skin tones as well. And I know, I know what you might be asking is that the focus is on the game and of course that is important, but we're gonna focus on skin tones first and then we'll come back and then edit in the components too. And plus this is only one photo out of 1200. So there's a lot of other changes that you can see. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and switch on over to yellow. Now typically in yellow, for colors overall, you wanna maintain the game's components. That's your overall goal at the end of your edit. But I do typically do not like yellow colors in general. So I like to bring it over to more of a more of like a crimson, maybe not a red, but more like a, a darker brown. So if you look at the table, actually if you look at the, the, I think the biggest part here is if you look at the background, that wooden piece right there, and also the paper, it keeps changing as I'm uh, moving this up and down. So I'm just going to shift this a little bit more to the left like that. We'll go ahead and bring up the saturation and we'll brighten it up so that way the component is a little more highlighted for now. And then greens, I also usually don't like yellowish greens too. Either I like a dark sage green or I just like a muted green overall, depending on the overall set. But right now it's gonna be okay because you don't really see many, uh, some, you don't really see many plants in the photo. So we'll just leave that alone for now. We'll go to teal and teal also won't need any adjustments. I think the only other adjustment I'm gonna make here is a dark blue. So right now blue is mostly gonna be seen in a ton of colors. So we have all the lighting is blue. So we're gonna bring that down that we can see a little more of it. And the walls right now are white, but it's showing blue. So we're gonna lower that blue a little more. And that's it for the color mixer. As we shift down to the color grading panel, here's where you go into your midtones, your shadows, and your highlights, a lot more drastic changes. And for me, I like to do some complementary colors. Is it complementary or contrasting colors? Opposite colors, whatever the term is for that. I can't think of it at top, off the top of my head right now. So we're gonna go into the shadows. And for shadows, I usually like, more more like an orange for the shadows. So we're going to softly bring in a little warm color right there. Let me see, like right there. And we're going to move this over. So again, I don't like the yellow green, like this right here, this side is my least favorite in photos. So I usually like to lean more towards like a darker red right here. And we're going to slowly shift that a little bit down. Again, subtle changes. For the highlights, we're going to bring in the blue, something like that to counter that orange. That way this gives a nice contrast. And then to even out both those colors, we're going to blend in all the way to 100. So here's the difference between zero blending versus full blending. So again, very subtle changes, but the best way you can see it is through Zhao's um, skin tone right here. Cause right now it's a little bit orange. And then as we go over here, it just softens it up a lot better. makes it way more smooth. And then we're gonna leave color grading at that. Texture I like to bring down, especially for skin tones because it brings out the quote imperfections. So usually don't want to bring up too much texture, at least for my own personal taste. So I'm gonna actually lower that a little bit, but we are gonna bring in clarity. So there's a little more sharpness to everyone's skin tone. And then dehaze, one of my favorite, favorite effects. So this is with like little to zero dehaze. And as you bring it in, you just get to see a lot more information in the overall photo, but obviously you don't wanna to go too drastic. So, but for now, my current editing style is just a little bit of dehaze, maybe like right there. And last but not least on this panel, we're gonna go into sharpening. Let's go ahead and bring a little more sharpness to this photo overall. So if you look at Alyssa, 
zero sharpness. Hers, her face is overall very, very soft. It's not really natural. So we're going to bring in a little more sharpness just so we get a tiny bit more detail. Okay, now that looks good overall for the colors, not too bad. And in terms of crop, I think the crop is actually okay. Everything looks pretty even, which is pretty good. Me and Bonds have been very, very in sync lately for our shoots and we're fixing a lot of stuff in camera, which gives me less editing time too. And it's a win-win for all, everyone. Now, a couple of other details that I want to fix up. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the healing brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to to increase the size of this brush. And I wanna get rid of this light switch because it just, honestly, it just bothers me. Even though it's natural part of the house, I just don't, it's a little distracting for me. So I'm gonna take that out. And this right here, I'm going to bring into that part of the wall. We're also going to make this brush a little bit smaller and we're gonna switch on over to content aware remove. That way you can really make sure all those details are fully gone. And we're going to let Lightroom process that a little bit. Now that looks good overall. Now, the reason why I'm using an overall Wacom tablet before we had to draw in, we had to shade in everyone and individually one by one. But now Lightroom has advanced by miles, miles and miles, miles. So by just clicking on subject, it automatically creates a subject. And let me tell you now, it is spot on. Like almost every time Lightroom's freaking subject thing saves me so much time. It's amazing and I absolutely love it. So right now it is highlighting both my models. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to bring up my shadows a little bit. See that? That's such a beautiful change, right? And it only affects them, which is absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and bring shadows to right about there. And blacks, let's, so right now they're a little bit um, soft. So I'm gonna bring blacks down just a dash. That way you can see um, a little more contrast in Alyssa's hair. And then lastly, I'm gonna actually bring up the exposure overall for them. Let's go ahead and brighten them up a little bit. And now I'm gonna look at the saturation slider and maybe we can bring in a little more color for them, just like a saturation of plus three. That looks good. Okay, so that's my mask for people. And then I create one final mask and then we're done with this one image. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to create mask and we'll go to objects. Now, this is where the entire photo ties in. Obviously, this is for a board game photo. So ultimately our focus here, yes, you're gonna see expressions because our eyes will automatically go towards um, looking towards other people's eyes and their expressions. But right now we have a very, very beautiful image with Alyssa and Xiao just smiling, having genuinely having a ton of fun playing this game. So I'm going to just add in one final accent and Again, like look at this object mask. Like, see that? Like just, it automatically shades in the paper. Like that's insane. Before I had to do it one by one. And even then there were still like very soft ridges, but now it's just so fast and accurate to the mask that I want. So the papers in front of them are like letters and music notes in the game. And what I want to do is go ahead and go to the light tab here and bring up the exposure. And that way it is purposefully a little bit obvious in me wanting to shine some light literally and figuratively, to the component. And then for the components, here's where I bring in a lot of textures. That way I can see a ton. Like, look at the difference here. Zero texture and a ton more, right? So you get a lot more detail in that. So I'm gonna bring in a lot of texture. I'm gonna bring a lot of clarity. Uh, that's a little bit unnatural. So we'll go just a little bit of clarity, actually. Maybe I'll run plus nine. And then dehaze, depending on the conditions that day, usually I'll use a lot more if it's like a cloudy day. We were lucky enough to get a very sunny day. So for this particular shoot. So I'm just going to bring in Haze just a dash. And then we'll go ahead and finish up with that. So that's done. And I'll make another mask for all the other pieces of components here. So I'm going to make one mask right here. And let's crank up that exposure to match the lighting on the other one. And then we'll bring down, let's see, we'll bring down the shadows a little bit. It's a little bit washed out. And then we'll bring in the texture, the clarity, and that looks good too. Okay, and then one last piece, of uh, one last mask that I wanna make is gonna be on the left side, right over here, which is that circular paper. So here's one instance where the mask didn't cooperate fully. It's bleeding over on the other one. So I'm gonna go in here, and then I'm gonna go to subtract, and we're gonna go to subtract objects, that way I can take out 
this piece of paper right here. And we'll just keep highlighting it so that way it stops selecting this piece of paper. And then one last thing, here's the ultimate photographer problem, always saying one last thing when we don't actually mean one last thing. We're gonna go to linear gradient and we did use two flashes here. One is actually behind the table and one is behind both of our models here. But I do still wanna mimic the natural light. So there's light coming from behind Zhao right here. And it's also light coming from behind Alyssa. This is the most prominent one and the most natural looking one. So I'm actually gonna bring in one more linear gradient just like that. And you always want to go like top down because light comes naturally from up top. So I'm going to bring that to look like that. And we're going to add in a little more exposure. So this is a nice warm photo. I want people to feel good from looking at photos like this and excited and interested in what, what they're having so much fun about. And then we're going to bring down the highlights so it's more natural and blends in more seamlessly. Let's bring down the exposure just a little bit more. I just want like a, a kiss of light on the very top. And then lastly, we're gonna bring in the blacks just so it blends in a little bit better for the overall photo. And that my friends is one fully finished photo. Per shoot, we average around 12 to 1500 photos and I will keep by the very end, usually around like 50 to 75 um, in my current, my current catalog of photos that I deliver to clients. Honestly, one of my favorite parts about photography, I typically don't show clients like raw photos, but usually you'll show like photos in camera and they'll see this image and they're like, okay, cool. Or sometimes if it's like really good in camera, they'll be super excited about it. And then you get to bring it to life and show them this photo. And they're like, holy heck, like this is amazing. So that's my, my one of my favorite feelings. And one of my favorite things about a photographer is just being able to bring a photo from something like this to something like this. All right, Wolfpack, I hope you gained some valuable insight from today's behind the scenes editing. This is pretty much my preset. So I'm going to take this, copy it on over and then paste it onto the next photo. But it's, there are a ton of adjustments I still make from each photo because as you saw here, this one was overexposed. Not every photo is going to be like that. And then of course I have two other um, models too. And so there's a lot of details that change between each photo. But this is a general overview of how my editing flow works from photo to photo as I go through 1200 of them. If you made it here to the very end, comment paintbrush because I feel like that's what we're doing with this. I may not be a an artist that specifically uses a paintbrush, but at least it feels like we have an empty canvas and we are changing it to make something that is way more lively and way more fun and, and just really enjoyable to look at. So overall, thank you all so much for hanging out with me. I hope you learned something today and I'll see you all in the next one.